The world is imploding. That's great. My mouth too small for this. We're doomed. The world is imploding. Before we jump in, I just want to remind you of the vegan health and fitness bundle, which expires in a few more days. So if you don't have it yet, it is 75 vegan ebooks for only $50. It includes my everyday Asian recipes ebook, which retails at $25. Topics include tons of vegan recipes. There's fitness tips, workout guides, how to go vegan guides, meditation, yoga, tips on losing weight, tips on building muscle, so much in just one bundle. So this is a 97% off discount. Do not miss out on this. The link is down below. It is only available for a few more days. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the bundle I hope you get a ton of value out of it and let's get started with the mukbang Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to cheap lazy vegan and another mukbang today You're watching another episode of munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series mukbang is an eating show So we're gonna eat together and we're going to chat and on Mondays I post mukbang videos So if you enjoy watching mukbang, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel today guys as you can see uh, I have quite the feast we have a spread oh my god i actually did not realize how much food this was going to be so we've got a lot of food in front of me i like variety what can i say so today is a continuation of my support local series where i am supporting local small businesses here in my city which is calgary alberta canada today i got the food from a place called veg in this place is a vegetarian place i thought it was vegan but i think they have some like dairy products and stuff but they do have a wide selection of vegan items as you can see here there is a lot of food okay from what i can gather they are a bit of an Indian fusion style place. So they have like Indian inspired or Indian dishes, but lots of fusion-y things. Okay guys, I'm just gonna run through all the food I have here and what I ordered. In the middle here, looking all fabulous and crazy. This is the Bronx Burger. And the reason why I ordered this is because the patty is an impossible burger patty, which I think is quite hard to find where I live. I haven't had an impossible burger for a long time. So I kind of like am curious as to how I will like it again. I'll let you know, okay? So this is the Bronx Burger with the impossible patty, potato chips, there's chips in the burger interesting, and uh, vegan cheese, okay? So I got that. This right here is called East Meets West. It's a samosa smothered in no butter, no chicken sauce, masala, chickpeas, tamarind, and veggie garnish. It's basically supposed to look like a big mess, I think, so I'm very excited for that. And this right here is called the Tofuka Bowl. So it's supposed to be tofu tikka masala, and then there's like rice underneath, I believe. And with that, I decided to get a side salad. The picture looked like a lot less food. The side salad is, it is something, okay? It is a gigantic side salad, okay? Definitely, they don't cheap out on the amount, I will tell you. It is heavy as well. It's like really heavy. There's like croutons in here. There's pomegranate. I mean, it's, it's heavy. And then for dessert, I got some vegan carrot cake. I need to work on my presentation skills. <laughs> but there is the vegan carrot cake, which I will enjoy for dessert. All right, guys. So uh, yeah, let's just, let's just jump right in. So I'll leave some information about them down below. I know most of you guys are not from my city, but still. So just a reminder to support your local small businesses. Try not to go to Starbucks. Go to your local coffee shops if you can, because Starbucks will survive, but who knows about the small businesses, okay? I'm gonna try this East Meets West. There's chickpeas in here, mashed up samosa, I can see. Let me just try a little bite here. Mmm. Mmm. Gotta get the samosa. Oh my god. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to do an Indian mukbang. So this is kind of like my Indian mukbang. But I do want to do another one with like true Indian food. Like not fusion. So stay tuned for that. Mmm. Mmm. I love samosa. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This is legit. To drink, I got bubbly. I have two because when I eat something like Indian food, I need like a lot of carbonated beverage. You feel me? I don't know how I'm gonna tackle this burger. It's 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 a little crake. It's actually huge. I actually can't. My mouth too small for this. Oh, okay, let me try this. Mm. Mm. 
There's just too much going on. I don't know what's going on. Oh my god. So that's really like hard to eat. <laughs> it's epic though. I mean, it's an epic. Oh my god, everything's falling apart. I literally have to stand up to eat this. Hold on. Mm. Mm. Okay. So it's delicious. There's like a lot going on in this burger. Pickles, tomatoes, banana peppers, a vegan cheese, impossible patty, lettuce, cabbage, potato chips. It's like a lot, but it's really tasty. What I will say about the impossible burger, which I've always felt from the beginning, was that it definitely has that meatiness and it definitely like reminds me of meat, but I don't think it has as much flavor as a Beyond Meat burger, which in some ways it could be good. I feel like for example, with Beyond Meat Burgers, if you put that patty into like any burger, that taste kind of overpowers any burger. So even if you put like other fixins in, you can still really like heavily taste that, you know, Beyond Meat, which I don't mind because I like the taste of Beyond Meat. But I feel like maybe with the Impossible Burger, it's more kind of versatile in that can add other things and that it's just gonna work as like a base. I don't know. But the, yeah, the taste is not like strong. You know what I mean? So I don't know. What do you guys prefer? If you guys have tried both Beyond and Impossible, let me know what you guys prefer. So now we're gonna go into this thing. Tofu Tiki Masala, was it? Let's do a bite. Mm. Mm. It's like tomatoey, kind of tangy. I don't really know what tiki masala is. Here's the thing. I've had Indian food many times, mostly when I lived in London. Yeah, I've had it many times, but I never know and I never remember what is what. <laughs> so every time I order Indian food, it's just a guessing game. Every single time I'm just like, oh, I feel like I've had this before. It sounds good. Let me just order it, you know? So I don't really know what tiki masala is, but this is tofu tiki masala. Is that, is that, is that what it is? Or did I just make that up? Tikka masala, sorry, tikka masala? Anyway. Mm. It is tasty though. Mm -mm. Let's try this epic salad. Is this really a side? <laughs> Ooh, okay, we got a lot going on here. Mm. Mm. Cucumbers. Mmm. Kind of loving that pomegranate seed thing. I normally don't really like gravitate towards pomegranate seeds, but it's pretty good. Mmm. I'm in heaven. Anyway guys, the world is imploding. <laughs> That's great. I think in the last mukbang or something, I was like, you know what? I feel like 2021 is gonna be fine. We're gonna be good. We got the vaccine rolling now. We're in a different mindset. We've learned so much from 2020. Spoke too soon, my friends. Spoke too soon. What is going on? <sighs> what is going on in the United States of America? What's going on, guys? Seriously, I can't even believe it. I mean, I can believe it, but I can't believe it at the same time. It's shocking, but it's not shocking at the same time, you know? Mm. I'll tell you one thing. You don't want to eat this on a first date. Okay? It's just impossible to eat gracefully. Mm-hmm. 
it's um yeah it's a, it's a, it's a crazy time you guys yesterday or two days ago i watched a movie on netflix called capital and it basically kind of goes through the history of i guess capitalism in a way and how it brought us to this current point where if we don't regulate it at this point we're slowly kind of going back to like the really olden times where there was basically no middle class and it was just poor people and then like incredibly rich people so this movie kind of serves as a warning that we're kind of moving toward that direction where we are losing a lot of the middle class that have flourished over the last few decades and then i was watching this and i was like oh god we're doomed the world is imploding So yeah. It's just insane. How do we get to this point, you know? How did we get to this point of such <sighs> disaster? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try some of the Impossible Burger on its own. There's like not much taste. This burger is good because of all the fixins. But like there's just not much taste to the impossible burger. I don't get how people like this better than the beyond. <laughs> Where I'm living right now, we're doing really bad in terms of COVID cases. Apparently we're one of the worst in terms of like, if you compare per capita. And I just don't get it because where I live, I live in Canada, okay? First of all, Canada is a big country, okay? We have tons of land and we are not densely populated. There are, yeah, there are certain cities that are densely populated, Toronto, Vancouver. Other than those cities, it's really not densely populated. In my city, we're very spread out. <laughs> Rarely you'll see a big crowd, if ever. So I just don't get how it's spreading so fast and so badly. The worst part is, if you live in Canada, you've heard this in the news probably, but a bunch of Canadian politicians got caught traveling to like Mexico and where else did they go? Like Hawaii during Christmas time when everyone else was told to stay home and not even see their family in most uh, provinces. And a bunch of politicians got caught traveling. So yeah, it's a, uh, <laughs> this is why people don't trust politicians, okay? Mm. I'm actually kind of glad I got the salad because it really freshens up the palette, you know? So yeah, a bunch of people, politicians got caught traveling and I think the majority of them are from my good old province of Alberta. Embarrassing, so embarrassing. I think like five people in government of my province uh, got caught and some of them pretended to be here when they were not here. <laughs> I don't know the exact details, but like, let's say they went to Mexico. They filmed something, like a video or something, before they actually left, and then they posted it while they were in Mexico to pretend that they were still here. Anyway, word got out, and um, I don't think there was many repercussions. I think some people resigned, but anyway. <sighs> Is this just what happens when you become a politician? You just become two-faced? I feel like maybe it's almost inevitable. You know, you kind of get entrenched in some sort of different culture. You have a mindset that like you have to put on a face, you know, instead of being honest. Like you can never be honest if you're a politician. Like, is that the rule? Like, I don't know. That's why when people that are like honest are like, oh, maybe I should go become a politician. It's probably not a good idea because it's probably gonna turn you dishonest. Like even when you watch like old videos, of like certain politicians, 
that might be like super corrupt right now you watch her like old videos of when they were younger and they were like starting out with politics and you're like wow they seem very reasonable they seem very passionate they seem like they actually care about issues and they actually care about people and making the world a better place and then they spend like i don't know 10 years in politics or 20 years 30 years in politics and all of a sudden they're completely different people and they're very two-faced they'll say cer certain things <laughs> in the public eye and then probably have a different opinion i don't know the full details about hillary clinton but when she first started you know being in politics or being in the public eye she seemed very you know honestly caring about you know issues i think she was for medicare for all in america where you know at that time i don't think a lot of people were i could be wrong but but yeah now i don't think she is for medicare for all so like what changed like how can you change that drastically you know what i mean i feel like if you're for something like medicare for all like everyone should have health care no matter how much money you have that's a pretty like strong principle that i feel like it's hard to be like actually i changed my mind on it <laughs> you know, but something happens. I'm telling you guys that social situations can completely change people completely and I don't think any of us are immune to it We always look at the outside We look at certain situations and we think I would never do that in that situation Well, how do you know that you're not in that situation? If someone is honest and nice and caring, I don't think it's a good idea for them to go into politics of any kind because they'll probably turn into something that they otherwise would not be. They'll probably turn into a different sort of person. But then what do we do? You know, they're the ones making decisions. That's why it's messed up, right? It's like the people that are making decisions are, you know, a certain way. They are politicians. But if becoming a politician can change somebody from being an honest person that cares about everyday people, then who's gonna fight for everyday people? <laughs> because anyone that has power, the power changes them, perhaps. I don't know. But anyway, I do recommend watching that movie, Capital, even though It's depressing. <laughs> you know how documentaries always, they'll tell you like all the bad things, right? They'll be like, this is what's happening and the world is imploding and everything sucks and we're all gonna die and it's horrible. And then at the very end for like two minutes, they're like, but there's hope. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> there's hope if we, you know, change certain things, have certain regulations. But yeah, the people that have the power, do they want to change it? Mm. Sometimes I just want to move to an island and not pay attention to what's going on in the world and just do my own thing You know, maybe just film mukbang videos in my own little cave. I'll just stay in my cave film mukbang videos Oh my god, the world is imploding. Let's just eat a bunch of food, okay? And sometimes I wish I was the type of person that didn't think so much about anything aside from like, you know my everyday life. I judge people like that. I'm like, oh, how can you not care about world issues? Not that I know everything, but but sometimes I'm like, kind of wish I was like that. Because then I don't have to worry so much, you know? You know what they say? Ignorance is bliss. Mmm, there's a lot of tofu in here. Mmm, oh, I'm so messy. There's no way you wouldn't be messy eating this burger. <laughs> Alright guys, I had to get more ice so I can have my second bubbly. I knew it, see? I knew I'd need a second one. <laughs> Whew, I'm getting full, guys. I definitely need to finish the burger because I feel like it's going to get soggy if I don't.
One thing that I found really interesting in the movie The Capital, or is it just Capital? I think it might just be Capital. One thing I found really interesting is that they did this study where they had participants play Monopoly. What they did was they had two people playing against each other and one person was given all kinds of advantages. So for example, one person would start with more money, like a lot more money, maybe double the amount. They could also roll with two dice instead of one, whereas the other participant only got one die with a die. Anyway, and there were some other advantages as well. So it was a clear distinction between the two participants. One was like the rich person and one was the poor person. And they just started out like that you know, and it was random, it had nothing to do with anything. And as they did these studies, they noticed that basically the rich people, so the people that were just given all kinds of advantages from the very beginning, started to get really cocky. They would start to belittle their, you know, opponent. They would start making just snide little comments. Not only that, but apparently at the end when they did, you know, like a survey or when they asked them, why do you think you won? None of them like admitted or thought that it was because they were given so many advantages. Even though they knew that they were given those advantages, they knew that the other opponent did not have the same kind of chance as they did. They just thought, oh, I won because I'm just better at playing the game. So you can kind of like take that situation and think about it in a broader context, which is the world and how, you know, people that are rich or better off, well off, people automatically just think, oh, I am, you know, well off because, you know, I work hard. That's it. Which, let's face it, sure, you might work hard, but that's not, that's not the end all be all, right? Mm-mm. Mm. And you know what? It's not even your fault if you were born with privileges. And it doesn't mean you should be apologizing for them, but like just the recognition. Yeah, like I made it this far because, you know, I started at a certain point or that I didn't have these other disadvantages. To me, it was shocking that like in this study, no one, no one just admitted, oh, it's because I started off with like double the amount of money. Yeah, there are people that make it from the bottom up, you know, started from the bottom, now we're here, all that stuff, okay? And I guess those people kind of serve as inspiration for all the poor people in this world. But realistically speaking, the percentage of people that make it like rags to riches stories, those are not that common, especially now. Maybe back in the day it was, but now that social mobility, is that what it's called? Like, I think that's what it's called. The ability to climb up that like socioeconomic ladder that has gone down dramatically and it's gonna to continue to just create a bigger gap uh, between the rich and the poor. So it's gonna become more and more difficult for somebody that's poor to make it up that ladder. And it would take probably a very special kind of person to do that. That's another thing. It's like people don't take into consideration also the kind of genetic factor, how you are born, like your personality. There are certain people that are just gonna become more successful because they naturally might have that drive. They naturally might have a certain you know, quality that somebody else might not naturally have. Some of it might be due to external, you know, circumstances and how you were raised, but I think a lot of it is also genetic, just like how you're born, you know? Think about your siblings, like, are you guys all the same? No, even though you were raised by the same parents, are you all the same? No, everyone is different. So you also have to take that kind of genetic thing into account. So just saying like, oh, well, like this person made it, even though this person was poor, but it's like, okay, what about the 98% of the population that don't make it? What's your explanation for that? Mm. I just realized what I actually wanted to talk about today. So I actually wanted to talk about the topic of celebrities going vegan and announcing it to their millions of followers, or maybe they did an interview in a magazine or something and they talk about eating a plant-based diet or going vegan and whether or not I think it's good or bad. I thought that would be interesting. I guess I had a lot of things to talk about today because I don't know. A lot is in my mind. Let's talk about that. What do we think? <laughs> 
Let me know, do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? I'm kind of torn on this one. I think it's good in some ways. Obviously, it raises awareness for something like veganism and it's obviously becoming more popular. I don't know if it's because of celebrities. I think it's just the internet in general, the fact that we have the internet, we have social media. So obviously the word vegan is, you know, talked about a lot. But at the same time, I do think that although there are some exceptions to this rule, I do think the rule is that a lot of celebrities just kind of treat it as a fad. Like they do it to lose weight, they eat plant-based to feel better like health wise you know they all live in like LA Hollywood so they're surrounded by that kind of scene so they kind of treat it as just like a you know a cleanse and they see it as like a healthy way of eating other than like Joaquin Phoenix who like legend by the way legend other than Joaquin and his wife I can't remember her name or are they married anyway his wife or fiance or girlfriend other than them I don't see anyone talking about the ethics I maybe I'm wrong but um yeah I think the problem when celebrities make it into, you know, a thing when they mention it and the vegan world gets like very excited about it, we like prop them up and then chances are they're probably not going to stay vegan and then they're going to tell their audience that they're not vegan because they're having all kinds of issues and then it's it's detrimental in some ways. So yeah, I think it becomes a trend when it's like celebrities, they endorse it and all of a sudden because it was a celebrity, it's like, oh my god, this is like a thing now, it's trendy becomes a trend and I don't like that. <laughs> this is not a trend and it just inevitably becomes a trend when a celebrity endorses it. Because most of them don't fully educate themselves on what's happening, they might see some, you know, factory farming footage, who knows, and they might talk about that a little bit, but I think there's a deeper element to it, right? So there's people that go plant-based for health reasons, okay? That's a different category. And then there's people that go vegan because of ethics, but maybe because they watched slaughterhouse footage and they were kind of like disturbed by the violence, which I mean, I'm kind of part of that category, but I do think there is a deeper element in that I don't think I would have gone vegan if I had just seen the slaughterhouse footage. I think the reason, one of the main reasons I went vegan was because I learned about speciesism and kind of the philosophical concept of why we don't harm sentient beings, right? Like you have to kind of learn that, I feel like. I think that's really important because a lot of people, so this is something that I've seen happen. So this is just my observation, but I've seen people go vegan, right? After watching, you know, some kind of disturbing factory farming footage and they, they make this like emotional decision, okay? Because they watched it, it's horrific, it's graphic. They don't want any part of it. They feel bad, they feel guilty. So they go vegan. And I think that's all in good, okay? I think it's good, I think it's great. I'm not criticizing that, but I think the issue is then after that kind of emotion leaves you, emotions come and go, right? So you, you kind of like adapt based on the situation. So after that emotion leaves you, they kind of like start to forget about it. They start to, you know, now experience other emotions of feeling left out when they go eat out with their friends. They start to feel isolated. They start to feel a bit weird, like the weird one. They start to feel uncomfortable. They start to feel like it's an inconvenience. So that emotional, initial emotional reaction that happens is not very long lasting sometimes. And I think a lot of celebrities either fall into the health category or just the emotional reaction category, or maybe a little bit of both. And it's not just celebrities. I think it's a lot of people. So I do think it's important to keep talking about, you know, the philosophical reason behind veganism, because it's not just an emotional reaction. You know, it's not just, oh my God, poor cows, poor pigs. Like it is that, but it's deeper than that. You know, we're talking about a full on like injustice that is happening, full on complete discrimination simply based on the differences in species. So anyway, oh my God, I didn't know I was gonna get this deep <laughs> whilst eating an impossible burger. Who knew I would get this deep, okay. I've also been thinking in my head that maybe I wanna make more, you know, educational videos, not just like food, videos where I'm talking about stuff like this, but maybe in like a little bit more documentary style format. Like I really like the way that Earthling Ed, how he does his videos, like respect, love him. If you don't know, check out his channel, I'll link it down below. The way that he does his videos, it's like documentary style, it's very professional. Like he needs to be on Netflix. Like that kind of stuff needs to be on Netflix, you know? Anyway, I do think one of the problems 
again, I don't want to say problems because I do think there is a validity in using any of those kind of ways to attract people to veganism. But we do need to talk about the deeper reasons behind why we shouldn't treat animals this way or why we shouldn't have these industries and really talk about the term speciesism. I think that's like crucial. Ah, yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> Tell me why you went vegan. Why you decided to go vegan. I would like to know. that being said maybe it is better to cater to the i don't want to say the lowest common denominator but the lowest common denominator denominator maybe it is best to use celebrities because they cater to the masses and the masses unfortunately are not the smartest beings and they're not necessarily thinking about philosophy you know they're not necessarily thinking about speciesism or discrimination so maybe it is actually a better method to use emotion rather than you know, something deeper. I don't know, what do you guys think? It is much harder to convey the message when you compare to other movements in the past. Not that those weren't hard. <laughs> like, uh, we're still fighting, you know, racism and sexism and all that stuff. A lot of those problems still remain, but it's even harder when it comes to something like animal rights because they can't speak for themselves. They're not fighting for themselves because they can't. And that's the issue, right? Believe me, if they could speak to each other and organize, they would have taken over this planet already, <laughs> but they can't fight for themselves. So it's much harder to even get people to like fight for something that's like not directly um, impacting them. You have to have like a lot of, I guess, empathy in a way. That's why it's harder. But that's why I also think it's important to talk about speciesism and how we have certain biases because, you know, even people that are against discrimination, you know, in humans, amongst humans, people that are completely woke, you know, people that are completely for, you know, anti-discrimination when it comes to humans, you know, you talk about veganism and all of a sudden they will wave a burger in your face. You know what I mean? It's like, this is the last thing that people just cannot wrap their head around. I, I follow a lot of people that are in the kind of left-wing, you know, side of the political spectrum, and I don't think any of them are vegan, you know? And it's, it's frustrating to see that, you know, people are so willing to call out people that are bigoted and call out anyone that is, you know, being homophobic or, you know, sexist or racist, which we should, but then when it comes to something like factory farming or animal rights, you know, vegans are the butt of the joke. It's just so, so hypocritical. And it's, it's shocking to me that people can't see it. That's what's like really frustrating. Anyway, I'm gonna have some carrot cake. <laughs> I at least respect when people admit. I've heard people talking about veganism and they'll like fully admit, you know what, vegans got it right but they are too afraid to go vegan. So they don't really talk about it, first of all, because obviously they're not vegan, so they feel like hypocrites if they talk about it. <laughs> but um, at least if they can admit and they can tell their audience, like, listen, like at least they have it right. You know, it's, it's a step in the right direction, in my opinion. But I think so much of the world just thinks vegans are crazy. And it's like, are we? Is it, is it really crazy to fight for anti-discrimination in all aspects of society, not just amongst humans? Just saying. Anyway, here's the vegan carrot cake. Ooh. I don't know why I got carrot cake. I feel like I just never eat carrot cake, so I'm like, you know what? I'm down for that. Ooh. That is not a sexy uh, slice. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, it's delicious, but it's so sweet. Mmm. The frosting is um, pure sugar, but it is delicious. And I do think carrot cake is supposed to be very, um, very sweet. Mm. One thing that frustrates me, <laughs> sorry to go on about this. This is a very long mukbang. <laughs> One thing that frustrates me so much is the amount of hate that vegans get just simply for talking about or advocating for veganism. It's so ridiculous if you think about it because people think, you know what, if you're a vegan, it's fine, just don't say anything. And I'm like, 
okay, that's not, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's like saying if you're if you're against discrimination and just, just be against discrimination, but like you shouldn't complain when other people are against discrimination. It's like, mm. and we're not even just talking about discrimination. We're talking about full on like killing of billions of animals. And then as soon as it's like one dog or like one cat that, you know, gets kicked or something, all of a sudden death threats, death threats to that person that did it. And it's like, so death threats become appropriate when it's a dog or a cat, but us simply talking about veganism and what's happening to factory farmed animals all around the world in billions, that is not okay, apparently. I don't see how people don't see their own hypocrisy. Like that's what's really concerning to me. I'm like, I thought we were supposed to be smart as a species. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to have brain cells, you know? I knew that shit when I was like 13 years old. Listen, when I was like 12 or 13, I was definitely not vegetarian or vegan, but I remember I would fight with people online. I don't even know where I would find these people. What did I even do on the internet? What even happened when I was 13 or 14? I don't even know. I actually have like no memory of that time. I mean, I do have memory, but it's like, was I ever 13 or 14? Like, that's crazy. I remember, maybe I was even younger. Maybe I was 12. I would fight with people that would be really anti, because you know how like dog meat is a thing in Korea and China? It's really not that big of a thing as people think, by the way, but it is still a thing. I do believe it's still a thing. At least in Korea, I do think it's a dying industry. I do think, I could be wrong, but it's definitely not as big as it used to be. And apparently dog meat became a thing after the war or something like that because people had nothing to eat. Anyway, it is still a thing, but I don't think it's much of a thing as it used to be. But yeah, people do eat dog meat in China and Korea. So there would be, you know, obviously protests against the dog meat. And everyone thinks, oh, that's fine and dandy. People that protest dog meat, go right ahead. We support you, go right ahead. And I, at the, at the age of like 12, I was like, mm, that's a little hypocritical, don't you think? <laughs> I'm like, don't you think that's a little hypocritical? Like, come on, come on. Can't you see it? I was like 12 and I was like, Come on guys, like I ate meat. I never ate dog meat. Of course, I kind of wanted to defend my country as well because I'm from Korea. I was like, first of all, not many people eat dog. And even if people did, it's like, how can you sit there eating your chickens and cows and pigs and then protest against a different culture simply because they have a different animal that they eat? I was like, that's a little hypocritical. I was like, how do you not see that? How do you not see the hypocrisy? I remember arguing with people about that. I think I remember saying at that time, I was like, unless you're vegetarian, you got nothing to say, buddy. I get it if you're vegetarian, but it's like, if you're not, how can you how can you keep a straight face? You know what I mean? Like, how can you keep a straight face and protest without looking in the mirror? Like, come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, you know what was really, sorry guys. One more thing and I'll let you go. Another thing that I kind of want to make a video where I react to like vegan TikTok because I feel like vegan TikTok is like a whole new world. <laughs> I haven't delved into it too, too much, but there is like a big TikToker person named that vegan teacher. I haven't really watched much of her content. I think she caters to a much younger audience, but I guess she's very hated in this TikTok community because she's quite I don't know, maybe she's quite aggressive in her messaging, I'm not sure. Maybe people just think she's too preachy, but either way, she seems to be like universally disliked by a lot of people, even some vegans. And I saw, I came across this one girl, she was Asian, right? So she maybe made a TikTok. She was responding to comments that were being racist toward her. So comments like, oh, like you guys eat dog meat, like stuff like that. So she did a video on TikTok kind of explaining, you know, that it's hypocritical to make fun of Asians for eating dog meat when people in the Western world eat all kinds of other animals. And I mean, good point, very good point. I don't think she was vegan or vegetarian, but she kind of had that same point that I had when I was younger as well. So, I mean, again, good point. I would take it one step further and say, don't eat any animals, but anyway. And then she made another TikTok, I guess because of the responses that she got from the original TikTok, where she said that like, there's no difference between eating dogs um, versus, you know, cows and chickens. And I guess she got a lot of responses of people just being, you know, attacking her for defending, defending eating dog meat. And what she said, I thought was very interesting. Basically, she said something like, oh, it's funny how all of you guys turn into that vegan teacher when it comes to talking about dog meat. 
And I thought that that was a very interesting observation because this is how it kind of is. People will judge, for example, someone like that vegan teacher who I guess is preachy. Again, I don't know, but maybe people think she's preachy. <laughs> as soon as we change the victim in the scenario, all of a sudden everyone becomes a million times worse than the militant vegans that are out there, you know? I've seen death threat upon death threat upon death threat to anybody that, you know, even remotely hints at hurting a dog. So it's like, listen, do you see how vegans feel now? <laughs> it's like, we have to be very careful in our messaging. We have to be very, very articulate, careful, not offend anybody, be very, very cordial, okay? Otherwise, we become militant, hated by everybody, even vegans alike, yet, as soon as we change that victim, all of a sudden, everyone becomes a million times worse than your worst militant vegan. It's, it's very frustrating. So that girl made a good point. I don't think she realized the point that she was making because the fact of the matter is, this is how vegans feel, right? It's like, it's so hypocritical. It's so just frustrating to be a vegan and you know see so much hypocrisy that's happening. And yet people just can't seem to wrap their head around it. Humanity, man. We're f***ing dumb. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of that. Mm. Sugar. This is good. Mm. Alright, you guys. So that's pretty much it for my mukbang. I know I talked a lot, but I hope you guys are still here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, another quick friendly reminder to check out the vegan health and fitness bundle, which is only available for another few more days, guys. Only a few more days to purchase the bundle and then the deal goes away forever. It is 75 ebooks for only $50, less than 70 cents per ebook, which is ridiculous. There are so many recipes to try. Even if you're interested in just like two or three books, it might still be worth it to purchase the bundle. So the link is down below for you guys to purchase the bundle. Once again, do not miss out. Whew. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.